this is the section on as you can see all seven members of the Sawyer family it really has to do with their contributions to the family business and when I first talked with Steve and became interested in the idea of a documentary on Art for God I really had no idea that the family was involved to the extent that it is I mainly knew about Steve's work and the controversy over some of the paintings and obviously I talked with Steve and surfed the website so I had some idea that that the family was involved but not until I went up there on that first weekend in November of 2004 and spent time with them did I really understand the the involvement and the intensity with which the family works on making art for God um, what it is and I think my initial thought was well it's going to be a documentary about Steve and the paintings and and it is about that but it's also about the family as well here Cindy's talking about the struggle to to get the get prints made initially and how they had to do it and contrasted with how it's done now where they do everything themselves and here's a printer that a new printer that Steve had gotten in the course of me shooting the documentary and he's actually printing out a copy of Divine Dignity which was one of his newer ones at the time he's done several more since then but the family is just heavily involved and that really includes everyone Arbella the youngest Van, Hart, Fanta, and on, and of course Steve and Cindy. And so after I'd gone up there and met them, it became really clear to me that it had to be about the whole Sawyer family. And perhaps that wasn't the best decision marketing wise. I think if I had emphasized more of the controversy over some of the paintings and you know, talk to people who thought Steve was, you know, a blasphemer for painting Jesus with a tattoo. And and I'm not saying that couldn't be a good documentary, but um, from my perspective, it really had to be about the whole family. And that's why I called it Sawyerville, which uh, was a phrase, I think, from one of Steve's friends. And they, they refer to Sawyerville a lot. And I asked Steve you know, what he meant by that once. And it's, he said, it's not really, it's not only a place, it's also a, a state of mind. And that's exactly what I thought as well. Sawyerville is a, it really is a state of mind. When you're around the family, they have such an energy, both individually and collectively. It's, it's unique. And this documentary is a, Obviously, it's a mediated um, impression of the family. I think the energy that surrounds them and, and positive vibes, if you will, that they give off, it's really hard to describe or talk about. It can really only be felt, and you feel it as soon as you're around them. When you walk into the gallery there in Versailles, or you go into their studio, or... You just you, when you're around them you feel it and here's Cindy hard at work she wears a lot of hats and she's doing some paperwork and the computer and you know, dealing with kids and you know the kids are so heavily involved and and Steve you know they have computers everywhere they have a CVS pharmacy right next door and Hart was on her way to get some coffee. You know, Hart is one who's just really involved. She's like their their right hand person in terms of running the office and she actually started college last fall. And I I wondered what that would be like for her not being around the studio and the gallery and all day long. Here she is cutting some bookmarks in a little back area. They have a couple of buildings downtown in downtown Versailles that, that house both the gallery there and the studio and here's a packing area. 
Um, this is actually an interview with Andon conducted in Gallenberg at the colliery there, but and Don does a lot, well he does virtually all of the the website work and maintenance and he's really he's really amazing the the extent and the variety of information that his brain holds he is accomplished as a graphic designer and web designer and he can also take apart a car and motorcycle and he is certainly very musically talented, not only singing, but playing the guitar, playing the piano. He plays the didgeridoo, I think, as well. So, actually, I didn't meet Andon the first time I was up there. I think he was gone, but I met everyone else. But he logs a lot of time doing the web work. These shots of Steve here are in his studio sitting in his favorite green chair he's wearing one of his red aprons and this is Arbella who as Steve says has really taken a shine to art she does she's always got a pencil and paper and always sketching and this was a uh, an initial sketch of one of her paintings called Miracle Baby that is available from Art for God that's it uh, behind Steve back there. It's really well done. And they had fun. He was her tutor, as he says, as she as she painted that. But yeah, these this footage of Steve here was from the first night that I interviewed him, the first time I rolled tape. And I actually thought uh I'd gotten there, I think I'd gotten there that afternoon and we started rolling tape about six in his studio for some interviewing and and I thought well we'll get maybe an hour and uh, but I always have a lot of tapes just in case and I was glad I did because I think he sat in that chair and gave me four hours worth of interview footage that first night and so we finished up about 10 here's Van working on the bookmarks we finished up about 10 or so that night, and I was just going to go stay at a hotel. And he said, well, you know, you need to, need to come back to to Sawyerville. He said, are you ready to go to Sawyerville? So I did, and we got to their place that night. And I thought, well, we'll go home, and I'll get in the bed. And when we get there, it's about 11 o'clock. Some of the family's there, and he says, hey, let's make some fudge. So he starts whipping up his famous fudge recipe. And the fudge is delicious. He could sell that as well. I mean, fudge for God or something. I don't know. But it, it's very good. Well, anyway, he makes this fudge about 11 o'clock at night. And more family members show up. And people just start coming out of the woodwork. And and uh, it's midnight, you know, 1 o'clock. And then he says, hey, let's go see the farm. So he and Cindy and I pile into one of their cars and, and go see some land um, that they have they're out at their place down by the river and so it's two o'clock in the morning on a crisp November starry night in Kentucky and I didn't have my camera I wasn't I wasn't repaired I'm not sure what I could have really taken it was it was pretty dark but uh that's just an example of of the memories that you carry with you as a filmmaker that you don't have on film or, or tape but it's all part of the experience and one of the things that really draws me to to certainly documentary filmmaking the access that you have to people and and experiencing their lives and and Steve is so so articulate and open regarding the well regarding everything but in terms of the process, not only the, I guess, the technical process of painting, um, but also this, his spiritual life, their family life, here's he and Cindy talking, um, it's really, when you have a camera in your hand, and you have someone like Steve who will let you into his life and all the Sawyers who, who let you 
be a part of their life. It's really a humbling experience. And it's something that you don't forget. And for me, it's something that is very satisfying and fulfilling. Aside from, uh, I, I hope, obviously, that a lot of people will see this and that they'll enjoy it. But aside from those things, it's already been just a tremendously meaningful experience for me. I love his studio. It's just it's so colorful. It's such a sensory experience with the, the colors, the, the canvases, the paints, the paint brushes, the cabinets and bookshelves that Steve has made, the books, various things and artifacts around. It's just a fun, magical place to be. Here's Cindy getting ready to head to the post office. There's Arbella, who I think goes with her on that trip. I went to. Yeah, here we go. Walking out of there, this is their gallery in Versailles and walking out onto the street and I think we're going to go get in the Art for God van. There it is. It's got Art for God, I think, on the back of it. And it's not only a van, but it's also a, it's a motel, basically, for when they're on the road doing conferences or festivals. It's a, a workshop and headquarters while they're away. It's some nice wheels. Very important. And like I said... The whole family pitches in in a variety of ways. There's Ar Arbella helping pack some materials. They were grilling out this night, had some music going, and Van showing some muscle. Hart looking over some of Arbella's work. A little quality control there. But it really is a family business, as Steve is about to say. It really is a family business.